So good morning everybody. So for this week we are concluding the shift stress. And uh, like you all know, it's the usual process like we do every week to give new topics. So for this week we're working on shift dress. But the shift dress is similar to the ones you've done before now. But the only thing we are adding to this shift dress is the plaquettes. Basically, for sheep dresses, it's a loose garment from either the bust line, waist line, or from top to down. But because we're trying to just add up to the uh, components, we actually added or included the placket, which is going to be an add up uh, sewing techniques for you to learn for the week. So now, uh, as the usual pattern that you are used to drafting, so it still go the same way. You draft your basic bodies to your desired length, that end of your dress. Most times, all sheep dresses are not long dresses. They usually stop on the knee line. The knee line is, most times, either on the knee point or before the knee point. So that is the way the sheep dress is, but it's going to be loose. So the first thing, draft the basic body to desired length. And once you are done with that, you do your shape bodies. And now uh, on my steps, I said shape the bodies if necessary because it's a loose dress, so you might not bother yourself trying to do all the detailed shaping. Now on the other boss, you can leave your shape shaping out. Or if you want to do the shaping, decide to just take all the excesses, at least minimally, to the side seam instead of doing it in between the seam line. Then uh, after that, you transfer your shoulder that to the underhand that. So now because it's a sheep dress, you don't need a detailed that on the shoulder at all. Most sheep dresses usually have their uh, that controlled to the under bust area, to the uh, side boss, or to the, uh, the side boss or the underhand. So instead of having the that here, we are going to cancel the that that is here and use your that manipulation technique to transfer it to the what to the underhand, which is this spot, like the usual method that you know how to do. When you're done with that, you can as well eliminate this that within the bodies. This waist that we don't need it because it's also a sheet dress. Don't also forget that in actually doing your sheet dress, you can work with different style lines. You can decide to create new cut lines, either diagonally or horizontally or vertically, as the case may be. But one thing obvious about the sheep dress is that it's always very loose, not too tight, not too loose. Now let's go forward. Now the next thing after that is widen the base of the dress length as desired. Now just like I said that we need to, we are trying to do a sheep dress which is uh, a bit flowing at the end that means on this side part of your seam you can increase on the base or the hip line let's say five inches width so if i'm creating a five inch cheese width what am i to do with my pattern it shows that with my pattern all i need to do is to extend this part you extend on this side. You can do four inches if you don't want too much uh, width. Um, you can do three inches here. And you also do three inches at this part as well. So, like I said, because it's not something so fitted, you can decide to connect from your waistline downward, or you can decide to connect from your underboss area, or connect from what your boss line. The choice is always yours. But for me, I'm going to connect mine from the waistline. Connecting from the waistline now. So I have something like this. Then for this part also, you do your connection. Now I'm connecting from here all because the uh, the pattern that I'm drafting, 
are so close to each other. So this just to show you that from this uh, point, from this point to this side like this is my back pattern, and from this side to this is my front pattern. So once you are done with this, you need to do what we call the end line shaping. If you sew this way, it's a little too sharp on the edges. So for you to avoid that kind of sharpness on the edges, what do you do? This point here, you go up one inch or 1.5 inches. And here you also go like one inch or 1.5. But here I did one and quarter, I did one and quarter here as well. So the one and quarter I did here is just to tell me that uh, I'm going to, from here now, I'm supposed to use the curve ruler. I think the curve ruler will be better for me to use now. So now once you are done with uh, widening out the base of the dress, all you need to do is to shape it out. Like I said, there's a need for you to do shaping on this end part. So now, what you need to do, you need to shape the hair part of your whatever pattern you're drafting or working with. Now that's to make sure that the hair does not look too sharp on the edges. So for me now, I'm going up here one and a quarter inches, or you can do one inch, and or 3.5 cm. So I'm doing one and a quarter inch, and I'm doing one and a quarter inch here as well. Don't forget that this line links towards this part, and the one for the back link towards this part, so you won't get confused trying to connect your lines rightly. So now, for you to connect at this base, look for the midpoint of this, the total width of the base of the dress for the front. This is like 14, so the midpoint is around this seven. So whatever I'm connecting, I'm connecting from that point towards here. Do you get? Then you come to this side and do the same thing from this other angle and you will have been able to complete everything needed to do on your sheet dress for the uh, front and the back. Now let's go to the aspect of say construct a scoop neckline or a boat neckline. Now as you know that when you did neckline variations you are taught how to maintain a scoop neckline. Now as you know a scoop neckline, most sheet dresses usually have a high neck neckline. It's not always too tight like the first one you did in body. So a scoop neckline is almost like this, but we need to just keep this one so that there will be more room around the neck area. And now because we are also trying to like add up a placket to our sheet dress, then that means we will have to maintain a moderate high neck. You can maintain the neckline that is on your pattern, or you can, from here, you can do 1 cm outward, you can do 1 cm on the shoulder line, 1 cm, then you can bring this one down 1 cm or 1.5 cm, 1 cm or 1.5 cm, and that's what I'm going to do now. The reason for doing this kind of neck is to make sure that I can add up the uh, placket that is going to be higher sewn along with the sheet dress but don't forget that it's also optional to add what a placket now and i said you can construct a scoop neckline or a boat neckline for a boat neckline you already have an understanding how to do that so you can go ahead and do a boat neckline for now for me i'm doing one cm inward here good and here i'm also doing the same 1 cm, I'm doing 1.5 at this point. 1.5 cm. Then I will connect with my curve ruler, my French curve. So I have this. Now the next thing for us to now do is to indicate the placket length. Now the placket length varies in length based on your choice of placket opening and design. 
So for me, we are going to from here we are going to measure down six inches for our placket opening length. Six inches from here, measure six inches, and you can also make use of seven inches. But I'm making between six to seven inches as the placket opening length. So this is going to be our placket. opening length which is what seven inches now like I said here once you have actually uh, interpreted the neckline you construct the placket so indicate the placket speed length of six to seven inches then after that is to cut placket piece in two places so uh, there will be a particular uh, short video that will show us the practical of the placket or perhaps we work with those that will be present in the physical class so that the knowledge can actually be well comprehensive and i hope that with this little explanation and what you can do on your own with little or no supervision you'll be able to achieve any style of your shield dress without any tension whatsoever so uh, i expect that we should uh, increase the level of our design so that we can be able to learn more things in a different way. So thank you, and that's going to come to the end of today's video on shift dress. So see you all in class. Thank you.